Hello there, this is Teresa. My business is Teresa Marie Art and Design, and I am currently in the window at 411 4th Avenue West in downtown Olympia. I have not been on StreamYard for a little bit, maybe close to a month, maybe three weeks. I've been really busy switching out my art room and getting it organized, having a lot of yard work and landscaping done. So here I am today. I'm going to be demonstrating how to paint on a canvas bag. And I'll move the camera and then just demonstrate. But this is what I have so far. And you can get these bags online or you could get them at any of the craft stores. I got this one at Hobby Lobby. And what I am using, this is, I drew it with a General's. It's a Scryball all surface pencil. It's number 1251 in black. And then I also wrote it in the description. But this is the pencil. It's like a watercolor pencil and it draws really wonderfully on the canvas. And then I'm using golden acrylic, the fluid paints. And to eliminate having to just use a palette, sometimes I like to just mix it up and I just use it straight from the inside of the lid. And then here I have a connoisseur. It's a double zero paintbrush. I'm going to use that. And I have this water container. I love it because it has two sections. I like to use one section for putting my dirty brushes in and then have a little bit of soap in there just to make sure I can get all the paint out of the paintbrush that I'm not using. And then the other one I use for just clean water because I don't want to have dirty water mixing into and having a an impact on the pigment when I'm painting. And then this also has these little ridges right here, which I love. And I just put the paintbrush right there while I'm not using it. And it this one is a company made by Raphael. I probably got this, as you can see, I've used it for many, many years, probably about 35, 40 years, I've done a lot of jobs, murals, fabric painting, painting on canvas, and this has gone through a lot of abuse, lots of memories. I love this. So here we go. And I'm just going to take the camera and tilt it down like this so that you could see. I already started painting the blue right here. And I want it to be what they call a white chrysanthemum. And I got inspired by this little booklet over here. Put this up just a little bit. But I have lots of books that I collect over the years. This is a iron on transfer pattern. And it's from the a textile museum. It's made by Dover, Dover Needlework Series. But I like to keep books like this just to get inspired. So I didn't trace the design. I just used and got inspired. So I'm using my own design. But this is what inspired me to do the canvas bag. Now, what I'm doing today is May 26, and I'm honoring the month of May is Asian Pacific History and Heritage Month. And my late husband, his family, they were from the Philippines. So I'm honoring my Filipino family and I am and my ch and the children that we had together. And then I'm also just honoring the history of the Asian Pacific people. And so this is a, a design, a chrysanthemum. It's very much of a Asian design that I got inspired by. Okay. 
So here we go. So I painted just a really fine line, outline. I like to use paper towels so that I don't make too much of a mess. And I'm just gonna go over where I put the black pencil. I just drew with this. And I'll just show you, I just use my pinky always as a guide. I'm right-handed. And I just go like this. It just takes a little bit of practice to develop muscle memory and not to be shaky. Now, when I've also painted on fabric, if the fabric is very soft, such as silk or any wearable fabric, then instead of using water, I use something made by Golden and it's called GAC with a capital G-A-C 900. And that helps to create the suppleness of the fabric. And it also helps so that when you wash the fabric or the silk, it remain, it keeps it soft so that the acrylic doesn't get all stiff and hard. But here I have this very thick canvas bag, so I'm not concerned about having this be very soft and supple. So I'm okay just to use just water. Now in nature, if you take white, something white, nothing is ever truly white. So how are you gonna paint something white and there's ways that you could do that. So what I'm doing here, I'm outlining in blue. And the blue I'm using is called Cerulean Blue Deep. And then I'm going to use the zinc white and paint the zinc white. And again, something in nature is never truly a, like a consistent blue or a consistent white, for instance, that I'm doing here. So there's going to be variations of color, especially with natural things like flower petals, leaves, stems. There's veins because they need the veins to take in the nutrients from the soil and to take in the water from the soil. So now I'm just going to show you here. I'm going to mix some white and a little bit of that blue. So it'll have the appearance of the chrysanthemums being white, but in actuality, it's going to be variations of blue. And once it dries, I could maybe do a little more highlight, put a little more white in sections to where the white would be more where the sunlight is hitting the petals. And then if it's a little bit deeper shade of blue, that would be where there's a shadow. See how this is blending? And then in a way, it creates a little bit of a, the appearance of a shadow.
Now, if you can see here, I did this a few days ago with the green. And what I did here is I painted the cerulean blue and then I painted the Hansa yellow opaque directly on top of that blue. Because this canvas is very thick and it's not gessoed, it's going to hold the moisture a little bit longer than if you were to be painting on a canvas that is gessoed. So I want to take advantage of the moisture in the canvas. Now, one thing you can do, and I'll do that with another demonstration, sometimes you can take that GAC 900 and put that as a base, but I don't want to do that. I want to create this effect. So this is an example. So again, I took the cerulean blue in here, and while it was still moist, then I painted the Hansa yellow opaque on top, and then I got this green. And then if you can see, I'll show you a little closer. It's not going to be a perfect green or a perfect yellow. It's going to have variations of yellow and green. And when I'm all done with this, then I'm going to do some little highlights just to signify where there's shadows and where there's the sunlight picking up on the, on the leaves. I like doing this because it's very meditative. I started working on this when I found out a very special aunt of mine had passed away. She was my godmother and she was very supportive of me pursuing the arts. And I found out last Wednesday that she had passed away. She was 90 years old. She had a very long life, very rich life. She's blessed with my cousins, her children, and her, and her husband, my uncle, and her grandchildren. But this is a way that I feel I need to grieve. And that's one thing as an artist, doing any type of art helps with stress and with grieving. A lot of my art is influenced by my love of the garden. I work in the garden a lot. Many of the Impressionist painters, the French Impressionist, they were all, many of them were gardeners, such as Claude Monet. And he's most famous for his water lily paintings and his paintings of a bridge and his ponds. And he incorporated a lot of Asian gardening influence in his gardens. So with Claude Monet, he did paintings, but he also used his garden as like a, a palette. He did a lot of color theory studies by incorporating a lot of colors in the garden. One of 
one way to be inspired by art and design and color theory is to look at ideas that you find in nature and look at the beautiful patterns in nature beautiful color combinations. <clears throat> hmm. In the spring, I tend to have allergies. So I kind of sniff a little more and cough a little more. Even though I take allergy medicines, So some of this blue has already started to dry. So I'm gonna to have to go in there again with a little more blue. So I'm gonna just go ahead and paint this white and then I will, <clears throat> see if I can get that. I'm gonna paint a little more white and then while the white is wet, then I can just add a little more of the blue. But I love, I love this chrysanthemum design because it's, and it's very, very Asian and it has a very, um, a fluidness, like it's dancing. There's a rhythm. I'm going to show you with this pencil how easy it is. And you really can't make a mistake because you want it to be kind of wiggly because that's how things are in nature. Nothing is like super, I like to have things that are very fluid. So I'm just going to put a little more in this flower and a little more in this one and just give you an example. I'm just going to add a little bit more in here. Like that. I'm going to add a little more in here. So you want things to overlap, like in here. So 
So while this is still, this is a little wet right in here. So I'm gonna paint some of that blue to get that softness in there. I think I'm just going to put a little more blue where it's closer to the stamen and, and pistol. And I want to have some little strokes. See how that blends? Just love how that blends. And it's because the, the canvas is still wet and the paint is still wet. So it's different than if you paint on a gessoed, stretched canvas. So right now it looks like blue chrysanthemums. But when I go over it again a second time, I want it to look like white chrysanthemums. And white chrysanthemums, the mums are a common flower that's used in funerals and memorials to honor and show your respect towards someone who has passed on. So you want to have all these little overlapping designs. And create with rhythm. When I've taught children how to paint, I've taught them how to think of the paintbrush as like a gentle little kitten or a little puppy. And I tell them that the paintbrushes are made of natural fibers. So this paintbrush has sable in it. They always clean my brushes really well when I'm done. This is an excellent cleaner that I've used. It's called the Master's Brush Cleaner and it helps to preserve the brush it's good for oil paint and watercolor and acrylic paint. And then I've also got little soaps at different art workshops that are handmade from the artists. And these are just, you know, similar soap. So 
So the shadows on the chrysanthemums can be blue. When I paint, I paint in a lot of different layers because I don't want to overdo something. So I will oftentimes I'll paint and then I study it and just observe it, critique it, find things wrong, find things good. And that's my time to fix and get inspired and see things in another different perspective, see things analytically in a painting. So a little bit of my paint, I'm just using the zinc white and the cerulean blue. So these are the only two colors I'm using right now. I focus on something and get that done and then focus on another part of a painting. So I want to have the same rhythm. And I don't want it to look like as if different people did the painting. <laughs> I just want to follow the same rhythm. So here I'm softening the edges. And I'm going back. I don't want to have those hard edges. If you want to have those hard edges, that's fine. But just for this one, I want it to be very delicate. And I want to erase those hard edges. And that's the beauty of layering your paint. And it's the beauty of the canvas being so absorbent and you can do things with a thick canvas it's a little bit different than painting on silk or or any other lighter weight fabric it's similar to painting on a really thick watercolor paper with watercolor paint has that similar look. So when I have petals like this overlapping a petal like this, I have to decide, do I want this to be more white and this to be more blue to pick up more contrast so that it's easy to define. So here I'm just putting a little more white
So that's pretty much what that is. And I will talk with you soon. Thank you for watching.